call the State of Milton Common Council meeting to order Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024 at 6 o'clock. Can I get confirmation of appropriate meeting notice? Meeting notice was posted at Milton City Hall, Hometown Ace Hardware, and Main Street Market, Piggly Wiggly. Thank you. And is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? We have an agenda. A Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, thank you, Ken, for volunteering. Public comments regarding items which can be affected by council action. Is there anyone signed up to speak? I don't see any. Any correspondence we need to read? All right. Mayor proclamation. Okay, this is one of the most important proclamations that a mayor can do. And um, probably one of my favorites. So, Halloween trick-or-treat hours. Whereas the city of Milton wishes a safe and festive Halloween celebration for its citizens and encourages participation in the gaiety of this holiday by both young and old, and whereas miniature ghosts, goblins, witches, and other mysterious creatures emerge each year on October 31st, and whereas they ring doorbells of their neighborhood and friends to extort goodies, and whereas the safety of these small creatures is assured by an accompanying adult and is a source of amusement and good cheer for both the very young and the very wise people whom they visit and entertain. Whereas I, Anissa Welch, Mayor of the City of Milton, proclaim Thursday, October 31st, 2024, Halloween in the City of Milton. Therefore, let it be known that Thursday, October 31st, 2024, shall be known as Halloween Trick-or-Treat Day, and the celebration will be observed between the hours of 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And I will sign this, this third day of September 2024. Too bad it's not uh, Council Day that day, because we could have it early, and I'll dress, but... Approval of minutes, October 27th, 2024. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve minutes from August 27th, 2024. All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? That motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding a conditional use permit request for lot 12341012 in the Tower Hill Meadows subdivision to allow for duplexes. Next Generation Holdings LLC, the owners of Tower Hill Subdivision, have requested a conditional use permit for lots 1, 2, 4, 3, 4, 10, and 12 to allow for duplexes. The owner of the land is developing the Tower Hill Meadows plat, comprised of 30 lots, that was approved by the City Council on July 1st. Next Generation Holdings would like to develop duplexes on six of the lots. These duplexes would be tar targeted at owner occupants. Many of the duplex units will be zero-step entry for disability accessible. Uh, two family residential lots require a conditional use permit in R2 zoning, which the lots are currently zoned. There's no fiscal impact for the City of Milton for the conditional use permit. The development of the land, however, will result in additional tax base within the City of Milton. City of Milton administration uh, recommends approval of the conditional use permit request for lots 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, and 12 of the Tower Hill Meadows subdivision to allow for duplexes and the uh, Planning Commission has met and uh, has forwarded a recommendation to approve to the City Council. Okay, questions, comments, discussion? I just had a question with regard to the disability accessibility in looking at the diagrams or blueprints um, it doesn't really define anything beyond the uh, entry uh, which you had cited. Are there going to be any other accessibility uh, things put in 
as part of the building in terms of you know the bathroom and uh, ability to reach the height of other the kitchen counter per se or whatever is needed for someone that's disabled or is that really become the part of the person that buys it? I mean it seems difficult if someone buys it and everything that's newly built then has to all be torn out and redone. I believe it is the intention of the developer uh, to provide uh, wider doorways for that type of accessibility. Um, I'm not sure about the counters. I haven't seen any uh, drawings uh, calling out the counters, um, but they do have zero step entries. Okay. Um, it would be nice to check with them because, you know, just inter uh, placing bars and things in there to, to do after it's built can be difficult and it's difficult to put in bars that are uh, stable enough to, to stay. Uh, often when you put in one that just gets put to the wall with rubber uh, application, they don't stay very well. And so if you would please, I'd appreciate it. Any other further questions or comments? I would move approval of the conditional use permit for lots 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, and 12 in the Tower Hill Meadows subdivision. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the conditional use permit as requested. Are there any contingencies? They were not placed at the time. Oh, all right. Um, so as presented in uh, the documents. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor, say aye. Anyone opposed? All right, that motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding a TIF development agreement for IHT Investments, LLC located in Tax Incremental Financing District Number 11. City Administration and IHT Investments, Carl's Place, commonly known as, uh, have negotiated a TIF development agreement for the construction of a 99,250 square foot addition to their facility located at 1650 Partnum Parkway. In this development agreement, IHT Investments will be constructing the 99,250 uh, 99, square foot addition. In return, the TIF 11 agrees to provide a pay-go incentive amount of $635,156, spread out in equal payments of $63,515.60 for 10 years, so long as the minimum real property tax payment of an equal or greater amount are realized <laughs> during the life of the agreement. Uh, the project will be located within Tax Incremental District fin uh, Financing District Number 11. Therefore, all incentives paid towards that project will come from uh, TIF Number 11. Uh, City Administration recommends the approval of the TIF Development Agreement with IHT Investments LLC for the proposed project within TIF 11. Questions or comments? Is there a motion? Move to approve the TIF development agreement with IHT, IHT Investments, LLC, for the proposed project within TIF 11. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding a charter next generation and cost and quality chocolate easements granted to the city. As part of Charter Next Generation's development agreement uh, for their site on Fickerman Road, they have uh, agreed to extend utilities there. Uh, these easements are where the utilities will be placed. Uh, charter Next Generation is granting an easement from State Highway 59 along Fickerman Road to the south of the property and along the southern portion of their property. To provide more water pressure, Charter Next Generation has decided to loop the water main, making a connection on Putnam Parkway. Uh, to accomplish this, Charter Next Generation has negotiated with Clausen Quality Chocolate to provide an easement to the city to, to make that connection. 
Uh, the utilities are being installed at the cost of Charter Next Generation. The city will be responsible, however, for the cost of maintaining these utilities once they're deeded to the city. Uh, city administration recommends approval of the permanent public infrastructure easements with Charter Next Generation and Clawson Quality Chocolate. I would like to note on the Clawson Quality Chocolate easements, um, there were two, uh, one minor change uh, since you did receive that on Friday. Um, on the third to last, last paragraph, we have uh, added the word approximate condition before the disturbance. Um, grantee shall restore the su surface within the easement area disturbed by any construction or maintenance activities of the grantee, that would be the city, to its approximate condition before the disturbance. The original document saw was to the condition of the disturbance. Uh, the second change that there will be, and this has not occurred yet, but on the map, the title is Public Infrastructure Easement. Uh, the engineering company could not get that change in, in time to state uh, water and sewer utility uh, easement. Any questions or comments or a motion? I move to recommend approval of the permanent public infrastructure easements with Charter Next Generation and Klaus and Quality Chocolate. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, that motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding a plat of survey for 390 East Madison Avenue and 416 East Madison Avenue. The owners of lots located at 390 East Madison Avenue and 416 East Madison Avenue have sub submitted a plat of survey for approval. The proposed plat of survey will allow transfer of 1.13 acres from 416 East Madison Avenue to 390 East Madison Avenue. Both properties are zoned R3. The plat of survey is in accordance with the Milton Code of Ordinance requirements. There's no fiscal impact to the city, and uh, staff recommends, recommends approval of the submitted plat of survey for properties located at 390 East Madison Avenue and 416 East Madison Avenue. Uh, this again was uh, reviewed by the Planning Commission and they have forwarded a favorable recommendation. Do they have specific plans for this property or just owning it? Uh, it is adding to a large uh, portion of land that the owner already owns. I don't think there's any specific plans. Okay. I think it's acting more as a buffer to his house. Okay. That's all. That was my assumption, too. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the submitted plan of survey for properties located at 390 East Madison Avenue and 416 East Madison Avenue. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? That motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding a two lot CSM located at 448 forward slash 420 Sandalwood Court. Y'all know where Sandalwood Court is? Oh, that should have been the team building exercise. <laughs> uh, Sandalwood Court is located by the dog park. Um, the owners of the lots located at the. Uh, I had to look it up. <laughs> At uh, 420, 448 Sandalwood Court and to the lot to the south uh, has submitted a CSM for approval. Uh, the proposed CSM allows for greater and better use of the empty lot to the south while continuing to follow code at the 420, 448 Sandalwood Court parcel that is already built upon. Uh, the CSM is in accordance with the Milton Code of Ordinance requirements. There's no fiscal impact to the city for this. Staff recommends approval of the submitted CSM for properties located 420, 448 Sandalwood Court and the lot to the south. Once again, the Planning Commission has reviewed and has uh, recommended approval of the CSM. Do we have any idea? Do we have any idea what the, the better uses <laughs> <laughs> might be? I think it gives them a little bit more land. Um, I don't know exactly what their plans are at this time, okay. but it does give them a little, a little, a little bit more land. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
any questions or comments further? Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the submitted CSM for properties located at 420, 448 Sandalwood Court and the lot to the south. Second. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion carries. Discussion and possible action regarding 2025 budget. Um, in front of you tonight is the 2025 budget schedule for review. Uh, it conforms to required notice requirements, and we can add workshop meetings at any point if requested, just as long as we notice and post um, within the minimum notification process. Um, the options for 2025 that we have laid out coincide with past practices of approving and adopting the budget on a different night than the actual public hearing. So we're just looking for review and approval of a budget schedule tonight. I have a question. Um, so how does the council decision on nonprofits impact the final annual budget presentation if they're if it's being approved on the same night in um, the public hearing? So I think the motion for the nonprofit they're presenting the second meeting in October, so I think there could be discussion at that point if um, requested, but the final decision has typically been on the same night as the final presentation, but we can definitely push it. If you want to discuss the same night that they present, we can do that as well. I just, um, I, I don't really have an opinion either way. I just wanted to make sure I understood you know, I can't remember last year. <laughs> I would agree. I don't want to get locked in to saying that, well, we've really already decided. Yeah. And so if we give so-and-so $5,000 more, then we have to give someone else $5,000 less. So it is just at that first meeting, um, it says that it's the council makes the motion on the nonprofit, and then it's the final presentation of the budget. But then the second meet it the budget doesn't actually get adopted until the second meeting after the public hearing too. So there can be changes up until the adoption of the second meeting in November. So I think in the past it's just been you all have made a decision by that first meeting so that we can have it in our um, in our final presentation that's basically a draft until it's adopted in the second. But I'm open to moving it. I just don't know if you want to make a decision the same night that they present either. Right, that's true too. <clears throat> Although, um, we would get their materials prior to that presentation to review, right? Correct, you're going to have the their materials by the first meeting in October. So you'll get materials, first meeting, Presentation, second meeting in October, and then the decision, the first meeting in November. So thinking that their presentation is really just kind of going to be a summary of the materials they submit? Yes, that should be the intention. Brevity. <laughs> they can a have summary. a, let's, I mean, we can give them a time limit, correct, for their presentations? Yeah, and I think in the past we have said, like, 10 minutes, but I can, if we want to put something shorter on there, I can send that out when I remind them about their, that they're presenting, if we want to set a time limit for them as well, like a defined one. <laughs> Is that um, a decision that I can make do, when I make the agenda f that day, or is it something that council has to pass? I think it's a council decision. Well, I assume that you'll be placing in the agenda the presentation with a 10 minute limit, and then when you have a motion to approve the agenda, it will have been approved by the council. Okay, so we can put on the agenda a five minute limit. Whatever you want. I would suggest notifying them, like, yeah. well in advance, though. Oh, that, right, right. Because they tend to put their presentations, with band, you know, several weeks in advance. I think the idea be t is that they typically go a little bit longer than the 10 minutes. <laughs> so maybe if we just 
limit it a little bit more with a bu- you know understanding there might be a buffer just for the sake. It, it just ends up being a very long night for the council yeah. to sit through, and that's what I I'm thinking about. So at at the same time, you know we have. A- interfaces with our and so we we want to give them enough time to, right. to, uh, to tell their story I, guess. I would agree if we, it, they take a while it's on us that they take a while because we've required them to do a lot of that stuff well that would be something that we would have already read and thought through because all of that will be presented in the materials that they turn in at a sec- what when are their materials due so and when are I, my screen went blank we don't make a difference so that would give us plenty of time and time to, to and they would have that all submitted and they don't need to regurgitate what they have in their paperwork right. they usually can, they can just present normally they don't regurgitate what's in their paperwork usually they have a presentation that talks about what they did and things like that yeah and i think last year they incorporated things like their strategic plan and stuff but that's typically the presentation is it's kind of more supplemental right it's right. not really well saying the same thing so then it did. doesn't matter that we've asked for their strategic plan stuff because that's in their paperwork and this is just a presentation yes you know, I, I do think if they emphasize the things we've asked for in writing, then we don't need that redefined by an oral presentation. Do we give them a packet of information or something that they need to? Not working today. Yes. Yeah, so they, um, I sent to the ones that were included last year. I sent them out, and then we made aware other organizations within the city so that they have that to available as well but yeah there's a packet to fill out and then it's due by september 15th and then that week after that is when i would normally send out an email to them reminding them of their presentation in october so in that email if we're going to set a time limit i would probably send it out to them at that point if that if there's a decision on a time limit or if we're just yeah letting them so we'll just I'll think more about it. That agenda isn't going to be produced for a few weeks. So. I, I would agree with, with Ryan in terms of, um, you know, giving them notice. Because, uh, you know, otherwise we've, we've had PowerPoint presentations uh, on occasion. PowerPoint presentations that probably took a fair amount of time to put together. Yes. And, you know, if, if we're saying five minutes, then we want to say... <laughs> It's five minutes, yeah. and um, you know we're not looking for that. And I just recall many instances that we had really long presentations, and some people followed the guidelines, and some people did not. So I, I just like uneven just for your best. Une- yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, it's not that I don't want to give them enough time. I just I want them to be mindful and not take us through a 30 minute, you know, where you have people that do a great presentation in 10 minutes and then we have people that do a great presentation but it takes 30 minutes. So I just want people to be mindful of our time too. So And I I agree with Ryan and I I don't have a problem with 10 minutes, then it's incumbent on us then if we say 10 minutes, that we enforce the 10 minute rule and make it very clear to them that you will make sure that you have it at 10 minutes because you will be stopped. I don't see a problem with that. There's I don't see a wrong problem with, with that and I'll make you the timekeeper to stop them because okay. it's, well, it is very difficult when you're up here and you know they're in the middle of a presentation. Well, if to we stop give them, them. I, and this is just my opinion, if, if we give, I say give them the 10 minutes because if like, 10 minutes is a very long presentation to put together to start with. It, but it is a long presentation, yes. 10 minutes. <laughs> and then let them know, point blank, that it is 10 minutes. 10 minutes means 10 minutes. And I don't have a problem with stopping people. And then that would be no follow-up questions from the council. It would be 10 minutes and everybody's done. Or do you want within the 10 minutes time for council to ask them questions? I still say we should be able to ask questions. 10 minutes is the presentation. Okay. 10, well, you need 10 minutes total. Otherwise, that's where we get into trouble. 
clocking and back and forth. We ended up sometimes 20, 25 minutes. I mean, we end up hours, hour and a half to some of these things, and we have a full right. meeting. Right. So we can put the presentations towards the end of the meeting and not at the beginning. So we have more of a timeline and we can also look at having um, more of a shortened meeting agenda if we can accommodate that and put them at the, the end of the meeting and um, get, the, get the business done that needs to get done and get other people out. Okay, so do you need a motion to approve the budget? schedule I think we have in the past so yes we'll do one all right is there a motion to approve the budget just the budget schedule as presented I'll make the motion second. there's a motion and a second to approve the budget schedule as presented all those in favor say aye anyone opposed all right that motion carries Um, discussion and possible action on committees, commissions, and election official appointments. We have an appointment for the police commission because one of our members, I believe, is moving out of the um, out of the area, so we have to replace that person. And we had an application from Rob Perkins, and um, that's the only application we received. So we'd like to keep the police commission fully staffed and the recommendation is to approve appointing Rob Perkins. Chief, no issues with him? No issues with Rob. He's a current police officer of the city of Janesville as well. Okay. Then I move to approve Rob Perkins for his appointment to police commissioner for the city of Milton. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? That motion carries. Um, general items for anyone? Um, any committee reports from council or staff? Do you want me to do do my report on the fire commission yeah. while you look? Okay, so Lakeside Fire and Rescue met last month, and we approved a modified um, borrowing bridge loan to cover some of the construction design costs until we received the USDA loan. So that was approved. Um, we also approved the union contract. And um, that those negotiations went really well. So that contract is approved. Uh, the membership approved it. Uh, we still have really, really high numbers for um, calls. So nothing is slowing down. Is there anything else that you can think of, Paul? That's a good summary. Okay, Paul said that's a good summary. So that's my report. Anybody else have anything uh, Parks, rec, from last month, or historic preservation. You already gave that report, right? So there's no new meetings there. Library. Library. I think the library's. Microphone. <laughs> Saturday, the library has their, what is it, their play, their butterfly wing parade, yoga in the park, food trucks, I think, or food, I don't know, something. I, food trucks was last weekend before last. Okay, well, my food truck will be there. How about that? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Good copy. I will be there with yeah. the Monarch drink, and which 15% of our proceeds goes towards the library, Story Garden. And then Tuesday is the auction and the BA5 all at the same time. The BA5 is not there. The BA5 is going to get canceled because of... They, they posted that. Yeah. I missed an email. Shocking. So That's okay. I, understandable. I, Saturday, I think they're doing the auction, right? I thought the, I thought the, 
I believe it was Tuesday. The auction was going to be the same time as the BA5. With the BA5. But it's just the auction now. That's correct. Okay, so Saturday is a whole bunch of fun stuff relating to Monarch. I want to see you all there for yoga. I'm going to be there for yoga. Bring your yoga mat. Um, oh, I thought it was yoga. It's a Yoda. Is it yoga? You said yoga, right? Yoga. <laughs> He's pulling your chair. <laughs> and if you haven't done the tour of the, and looked at the Monarchs, they it's amazing. It's impactful. They're, the talent is just incredible. So it is really worth your time to look at the the, the monarchs. Well, I do want you guys to bid high for those. Just the one that my wife wants, if you could not, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> I am going just to bid up everything. I know you are, because you're, you're just that way. <laughs> the auction is Tuesday, September 10th at 6 p.m. Okay. So whatever your, your, one, your wife wants, you let me know how much she wants to pay. <laughs> Anything else, yeah, Teresa? Um, you got it. Okay, gathering place. Uh, they moved the uh, gathering place uh, summer concert. The last one will be Thursday, September 12th, the Jimmies, if anybody is interested in attending, uh, beginning at uh, 7 p.m. And there are lights there if anybody wants to attend that one. Hopefully there still will be decent weather. Mm -hmm. There uh, still are tickets to the Packers versus Vikings game, if you're interested in attending that at so all. Is that like a bus ride and refreshments and yes, stuff? Yes, everything uh, included. There's uh, the bus, the driver, gratuity is included, light snacks, and a beverage. What's the date of that again? Uh, September 29th. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's supposed to be a good game. It so is. A, that's a, a Sunday. And I don't know, it doesn't specify the yeah. time of the game. So. I think it's a, it's a noon game. Okay. And there is, I don't know if anyone has ever been to one before, but this sip and style fall fashion that they bring uh, things from a grace. Mm -hmm. A grace wants to be a part of it. So they bring clothing and different styles from a grace that have been donated. And they have a style show and anything that you would be interested in uh, kind of paying for it and then that money is donated between the two, the uh, Grace program and some to the gathering place. Uh, $10 admission for a light snack and then there's a, also a bar available. Uh, last but not least, the Pumpkin Fest on October 6th for children and grandchildren. Uh, everyone gets to do their own pumpkin to decorate and then at the very end they get to uh, give one to someone who throws them off the roof for them. So, I mean, not the one that they, they not the one that they don't. Oh, <laughs> not after all that work, but it is fun to kiss like to watch. It. So, anyway, bring them all. all right. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any, anything else for anyone? Okay, team building exercise, which you got way ahead of the meeting. <laughs> you know, an hour fish. fish. That's better than at the meeting. I'm improving my skills too. I mean, Bill got it really early because he happened to be sitting next to me when I was typing up the email. <laughs> and I've changed my answer already. Oh, well, okay. This was there exciting then. All right, I'll go first. Uh, okay. I would like free books for the rest of my life. I read lots and uh yeah that'd be great did you want to say the question was so that our audience member can um know? okay these oh. this is it here it is I, didn't get my team, yeah. <laughs> I know shoot choose one okay so and this is just you know another tribute to our our reading lifestyle and the life of having an awesome library in the city um choose one a is free books for the rest of your life B is a week with your favorite book character. It doesn't have to be real or anything. It doesn't, not even alive, really. We'll bring them back to life for you. A job working for your favorite author. A paid trip to a book signing every year. 
and I can repeat them when, whenever needed. I think I'd go with D, the paid trip to the book signing. And, and I'm leaning them towards that as well, but I was going to say, based on some, just curious with that one, does that mean paid trip to anywhere in the world for book signing? Or like, is there like a 30 mile limit? No, I mean, that's, it's that's, you know how library, generous library Can you only be there for are? one day or do you get to be there for a whole week? It says a paid trip to a book signing every year, so. And that never talking about it, and she initially picked the free books for the rest of her life, and she realized that she got, she has that anyway with the public library. Yeah. So, I yeah, I I figured uh, a week with uh, your favorite book character. So. And who was it? Oh, Jack Reacher. Oh. Okay. That would be fun. <laughs> Ryan, that was your final answer. Yeah, the as well. Okay. Okay. Right? okay. Yeah. Anyway. You're not going to the afterlife or doing any time travel. Maybe some time travel? That would be fun. Oh, I want to spend, uh, I want to have a job working for my favorite author, and it can either be John Meacham or Doris Kearns Goodwin. Those are my two favorite authors. I can go. Uh, so a little bit of a backstory is my sophomore year, my was at a new school and they required you to read three books within the first semester. And I came in the very end of the semester. And, um, it was an honors class and they said, I don't know if you can do it. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll read three books. Um, Janet Ivanovich had a, had three books at that point. Um, and so, uh, every year, year and a half, she has a new book out. So I feel like I constantly am reading her. Um, but so I would do a week with your favorite book character which is Stephanie Plum. Those are really good entertaining books. I started reading those many many years ago too. So fun. fun. You know I, I yeah yeah and I wanted to choose that but I figured I would it would become a problem because I would just it's already a problem and I'm paying for them so. Paid trip. Are you guys going together? Or? <laughs> if we like to say books, yes. <laughs> I'm going with the paid trip as well. Ooh. Paid trip. Are, are, are you guys not going on enough trips? <laughs> There's a theme here. I do the free books just because I'm usually too cheap and I'm too lazy to go to the library. So if I just had them shipped to me, I'd probably start reading a lot more. And probably would have been smart enough to choose the paid trip then too. Who's left? Who's left? Yeah, I'd say uh, free books for a lot of the reasons that Brandon just stated. And <laughs> I'll go with that. <clears throat> the free trip, you know, you realize all it says is to a book signing, and that's it. So, you get off your plane, you go to the book signing, that's all that, that's guaranteed on that. So, if you like going to book signings and watching people stand in line, or more likely an author sitting in a book at a table waiting for people to come and ask them to sign something, 
just just remember that that's that may be a condition. So. Leave it leave it to the attorney to enter, enter all the caveats and. <laughs> Thank you. I, I I love the legal interpretation of that. So. <laughs> Okay, our guest. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you all for participating. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fun. I did. I knew that Ashley wasn't going to be here, but I did send it to her, and I would guess she'll respond when she gets a chance. All right, next meeting date, September 17th, 2024. Let me know ahead of time if you all are going to do yoga so Jenny can post a possible quorum at the library doing yoga. Okay, so... I'm going to add something real quick, if that's okay. Yes. So, um, the sipping style, uh, my mother and I are go both going to be models this year for it. So, I encourage you to come and support us. And are there any staff reports, any updates? Paul, anything since... We passed that point. We didn't have I know, but I forgot. I forgot. I can go back. You guys always make me go back oh, when I forget stuff. Last uh, Tuesday, I thought was a, a valuable uh, time uh, with City Council. Um, lots of good questions, lots of good answers, um, both in the strategic planning and the budget workshop. Um, uh, just want to thank you guys for that. You're Kelsey. Welcome. Kelsy. Kelsey. didn't talk too much about your good questions. <laughs> I wouldn't know, but I heard it was really good. <laughs> Kelsey? Um, we've just, leadership has just been working on budget development, so Paul and I have sat down with almost all of leadership to get ideas on what they're looking for in budget, so we're going to work on pulling that together to be able to be ready for a first look at it in October, unless there's anything before, but otherwise just working through that, waiting for a few other projections from other vendors that we use, so that's where we're at on budget. Um, <clears throat> change of season, so getting ready for fall, Splash Park is off, and uh, we were reached out, the Public Works Department was reached out to by the Milton School District to participate in a program called Craftsman with Character. Uh, it's kind of an interesting program if you haven't heard of it. They've got a lot of information online, but basically we'll be having students uh, job shadow for an hour to an hour and a half in the mornings with the different departments at Public Works, Wastewater, Water, uh, Parks, and uh, Streets. So just first day of school today, so first day with students um, on site, but went well. Chief? Uh, not much on the police department side. Um, Craig Corder is still in the academy. He's coming up to the near end of phase one for the academy. That seems to be going well from all accounts. I plan to pop in to visit the academy and just see how things are going uh, this week or early next week since it's a new facility at Blackhawk Tech. Uh, I'm sure they want to showcase how much has changed, and just from the outside perspective, it's quite immense. Um, staffing, we're still a little bit short, so we're, we've had to unfortunately withdraw our SRO from the schools this year, so we've kind of ramped up our uh, first day shift officers and mid-shift officers' presence in the schools to kind of counter that um, with the shortage we have right now. So hoping Craig can complete the academy sooner than later. Unfortunately, there's a strict timeline for that, so it just all boils down to how quickly he finishes the field training and certifies for solo patrol. Uh, so we're not looking until late February for our SRO to return to the schools on a full-time basis. He is kind of in and out as his shift and weird schedule will allow right now. Um, so one of the big hiccups we're working through, um, and I did get in on time, our squad orders or the potential for our squad orders, so kind of shopping those out for next year from three vendors um, since we'll be upfitting two for next year. Other than that, um, no wonky changes on the PD side of things. Except for those great videos that we see you in. Mixed reactions with the school district videos, but uh, I try to shun out the negative reactions. That's good. Don't read the comments. <laughs> I, I have not. I have not. I thought it was great. I loved them. I think anybody that will do a video 
Um, they're, they can be nerve wracking and, you know, we could do one as part of team building to make it easier if, you know, you'd like to do that. Just pop me an email. I'm seeing a lot of, yeah, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anything for anybody else? Jenny, anything? Sorry that I forgot staff reports. Uh, last week I went to the annual clerks conference, um, so this conference was heavily dedicated towards liquor licensing updates and the presidential election, so that was really great to find some new ideas that we'll be bringing in back to the city as far as organizing, um, staffing, etc. Uh, we do have our schedule ready for our election officials uh, for that day, so we have more than enough people, which is really exciting. and. Yeah, that's pretty much it right now. Okay, our next meeting date is September 17th, 2024. If you didn't hear me the first time, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? We're adjourned. Good job, everybody. Thank you.